Farmer in Tampa, Florida, and I am here with Razzle the Bichon. We're going to give her a haircut today. So let's get busy. Say hi, Razzle. She needs a good haircut, doesn't she? So I've already washed and blow dried her. So much hair saves all that blow dryer noise time. Good girl. <clears throat> so Razzle is an older girl. And just like me, she needs her waistline to find a little bit better. And how it is with us older girls. Hi Esther, how are you? And Organic Gal, hi. And Jennifer. I was going to send you that video, Jennifer, but it was too long to send. So, I'll probably upload it to YouTube just for a fun short or something so you guys can see it. your nails done? You do. That was so much fun. That was so much appreciated, you guys. I was going to be live on YouTube when, it, when Lisa got here, but we had so many barking dogs Saturday. It made it very difficult to go live. <clears throat> they were just so loud. I didn't think anybody wanted to listen to all that barking. <clears throat> so Razzle here is going, going to be an ambassador for the Meet the Breeds um, at the convention center downtown next weekend. So if you're local here in the Tampa Bay area, be sure to check out that event on Meeting the Breeds. It's an AKC interactive event where you can go see and touch over 100 different breeds of dogs. And their AKC is on tour, so even if you don't make it to the one in Tampa, you can see when they come to your area. All right, so I'm going to start by trimming her pads. This is going to be a breed standard trim. Turn. Turn, turn, turn. My goal with Razzle will be to bring her up on leg, to narrow her out just a little because she looks a little wide and bring her head into balance. Can you find her harness and hand it to her? Yeah. All right. All right, so, get back to you. Take her belly short. No, nope, don't need to. Her mom already did that. And I'm going to clean out the halos around her eyes, exposing the dark skin all around the eye. So to do that, I'm using a 40 blade. I'm just going to go in here and carve. Right around the eye to really make this black skin pop. And 
going to pull back her mustache and clean this hair in front of her lips to show off this black skin. And I like to get the little bit of hair off the top of the nose. It's pretty good. Dazzle. <clears throat> and Eddie's here. Eddie can be washed and blow dried. Okay, Eddie. Yeah, you can go ahead and take him in. He's a wild one. All right, so her mom already took her under carriage really short. I'm going to take it even shorter. So I'm going to come on up into her armpits a little bit. This is a seven blade. I'm going to come around her little rounded belly there a little bit. There we go. Suzanne, Suzanne. My five blade is not here. So I know where it is. I'll be right back. So now I'm going to use a five blade up under her chin. Right about where her little Adam's apple trachea area is, you can feel the lumpiness. I'm going to create kind of a V shape here. Just trim out some of this real short. Right in here. And then I'm going to set her top line before I set her underline. Because I want to see just where I want all these lines to end up. stand. I'm just getting on in there and cutting right where I want it to be. I don't whittle it down. I get right down in where I want to go.
going to take my curved shears and then lay my hand pretty much on the table. And I'm going to start rounding her up from underneath from that area where I shaved with the seven blade. Bringing out kind of a barrel rib cage. I want her to come up on leg, but I don't want to make her look too small. And not quite so hefty. I wish that worked for me, but it works for dogs. I guess we can do that with the clothes that we wear or what we choose to as people. We can alter the image of how we look by what we wear. And it's the same with dogs. Now right in here, I'm gonna create a little windshield wiper motion to set the tuck up and the waistline. So here, your eye is making her look really long because of the way her hair is left up here. So I'm going to shorten her back a little bit. Correctly, Bichon's should be 10 long to 9 high. But she looks right now more 12 to 13 long to 10 high. So we want to to adjust that with her hair. So I'm gonna take this in nice and tight. And this is where understanding the standard of the breed comes in. If you read your standard of the breed and you see that a dog should be 10 long to nine high, then you'll know where to put your lines when you're grooming a dog to, to balance that out. scissors on her. Let's, let's, let's scissor with some chunkers maybe. So to make her neck look longer, coming in behind the ear and up over the shoulder. I'm gonna angle all this backwards and tightly so that it makes her neck look longer. set her legs up under her just a bit by making sure there's slight definition between the chest and the front legs. starting to take shape. I'm going to bring her in more here for some angulation. For that I'm going to use my curve chunkers. This too will shorten her back a bit.
And I'm gonna set her tail up on high by taking some of this fuzz off the back of the tail. So, just with what I've done so far, you can see how she's looking leaner and shorter. Now we're going to turn her to the other side where I haven't done that yet. And you can see she looks lower and longer. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Again, I'm going to take my curves. I'm going to come up from under the dog, round out her rib cage. She has some grand puppies going to be born soon. Her daughter is pregnant and due very, very soon. This breeder always has the most beautiful puppies. We'll be right with you. All right, Razzle. All right. Now we're going to do the windshield wiper. Seven, how are you? setting in the angulation, creating this curve on the back of her leg above her hock. to take some off the front end here. To shorten her back a little. So this is the first time around on the scissoring. This helps to set in the shape. So I'm basically drawing my outline of what I'm trying to do with the dog.
Next, I'm going to come up and over the shoulders here, create her shoulder line and make her neck look a little longer. do with you. Huh? So from the front side, I'm going to bring her up higher in the chest area here. So I'm going to angle this under. going to bring her beard up to bring her head into balance with her body so she's not top heavy. Very cute. Honor doesn't remember me but I used to groom this dog. Oh yeah? yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like yeah okay. <laughs> Hi mama. How you doing? Good to see you. I usually tend to leave quite a bit of hair on Razzle's ears because she has very lightweight ears and if they go too short, they pop up out of her head hair a little bit. So she she's a one that, from experience in grooming her, she needs that hair on her ears for sure. So she's not too wide this way. I do take it straight up on the sides and try to pull her in a bit because I can't take it off the length of her ears. So I have to take it in through here. scissor around her feet. I'm going to use curve shears to do that. I'm going to brush everything from up underneath. Brush it all down and create a round foot taking everything that falls below the pads.
I'm going to turn my curves upside down and angle them back towards the hocks here. Turn, 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 turn. So I hope everybody had a wonderful Easter. I did. I had a great day. Lots of cooking. Family time. started getting things put together for my certification testing with the International Society of Canine Cosmetologists. Looking over exactly what I need to do. Just for the bathing section to be a good bather. I think they call it the Dermatech test. There's probably six, seven hundred pages of reading and an extensive test and bathing and blow drying two dogs and pet CPR certification with it. So there's, there's quite a bit there that you have to do just to be a pet bather. And it's kind of funny, a lot of times when you're hiring, there people come in and apply for the job. Well, I wash my dogs at home. It's like, yeah, it's not quite the same. Not when you're doing it professionally. There's a lot you have to know. And I totally agree with that. So now that the outline is set, now I can start going over her and pulling it all together. Making it all nice and even and stylish. I'm using my V3 chunkers and my Zolita curved shears to do her.
it's so easy to want to leave too much hair or not enough hair on this braid. So I'm angling in over the shoulders, angling up towards the neck here, angling up towards the top line with my scissors angled in. Leveling out the top line. Good girl. Yes, he's a good girl. He's a very, very good girl. Yeah. Pulling your waistline in a bit more by angling my shears up from underneath out towards. I'm creating roundness. Coming up, up, over, flat. This way she's not in too narrow when you look down on her because she comes up and out and then over. It keeps this whole area here wide enough to where when you look down on the dog, she looks nice and fluffy. <clears throat> I'm gonna wrap up her tail so I can keep all this hair from getting in it. Take a minute and do that. Okay. Otherwise, I'll be constantly trying to comb this little clippings out of it. see what I'm doing. I think at this point I'm going to bring out my fine tooth comb. Leaves less dense in the hair as I'm scissoring. Stand. Good girl. She's really starting to look shorter and up, isn't she? Can you turn this way, Mama? This way. Let me get your face. Raise you guys up just a hair.
so I combed the top knot back and I combed part of it just a little level here forward using my curves this way to keep the overhang out over the eyes. I'm carving around the eyes. Trying to expose these beautiful eyes. Now I'm gonna bring a little more hair forward and build it out a little further. Using my curves backwards, gonna build it out this way. Now I'm gonna come a little more forward. You can start taking my curves the regular way this way. Now I'm going to comb a little more forward and just keep going step by step, bringing it all out and forward. If I remember correctly, a Bichon's nose should be one third in its head two thirds of the total distance. So by creating this overhang on the top knot, you're creating the optical illusion, if the dog's head is not already correct, that it is. So basically, you want to end up with two-thirds to one-third in this total distance. I'm going to comb it all up and back. And those details do matter. In your finished product, they certainly matter. That's where, again, where the standard of the breed comes in. If you read and understand the standard of the breed and you apply it to your grooming, your dog will come out looking like the breed of dog it is in proper proportions. My goal is to make the head as round as possible in balance with the dog, creating the proper proportions. something I think a lot of pet groomers are afraid of in hand scissoring. They're not quite sure what they're doing with it. And you oftentimes see me get confused too when I'm not sure what I'm doing with a haircut when a client has like a specific expectation and I'm not quite sure. This same thing goes for groomers who haven't learned uh, the pattern to put on a hand scissor dog and all hand scissor dogs do indeed have a pattern depending on their breed so what you have to do is get that pattern in your mind 
what pattern are you putting on a hand scissor dub? And that's what I try to help people to learn. Because once you learn the pattern, you can put this haircut on anything with the right amount of hair. All you got to do is learn the distances, the proportions, and the how short and how long to take each specific area. And once you get that, like you guys see me put a Bichon trim on a floppy coated Havanese, and he comes out darling looking because I know the pattern that I'm putting on him. <clears throat> She's fidgety. I'm always having to reposition her because she's fidgety. And I just get the job done as quick as possible and send her home because she's fidgety. And what helps you to determine the pattern is indeed the breed standard. forth on her feet. pretty good. Looking pretty good, Miss Razzle.
So on Saturday, we had a visitor come into the shop I wasn't expecting. We had the owner of Max Pet Market, another grooming salon here in town, stop in and say hi. So that was pretty cool. His name's Paul. We've talked before on messenger and text, but never met in person. So that was very nice of him to pop in. It was one of those crazy noisy days when we had dogs pooping everywhere. <laughs> so I was like, great. <laughs> but not the best time to show off my shop. So <laughs> always seems to be the way. So now you can see her dark halos around her eyes exposed. That is like all in through here and all under the eye. That's where I clipped it short. It's really important to expose the halos and the dark pigment on your Bichons and really, really make it pop. And we had Lisa stop in with the gifts for Alexis. A lot of you guys didn't get to see it, so let me see if I can show it to you now. Show you what you guys did for Alexis. A lot of people pulled together to make Alexis's day really, really special. My dogs were trying to escape. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. 
All right, we're going to check out Phoebe now. <laughs> Say goodbye. Wasn't that awesome? You guys are so awesome. Razzle's like, what's happening? <laughs> So Friday on Yappy Hour, we're going to be talking about Alexis's first phase of the testing and um, her testing is through International Professional Groomers. So we're, she's going to hang out during Yappy Hour and we're going to talk about it, about what it took and what it is and um, if anybody else is interested in certification, we can talk about um, how you can get there too if you're a groomer. So we're going to talk about it. I think she's applying it towards her next certification, guys, on the cash. I've been buying some new tools this week, some new hand stripping tools. I'm kind of excited about that. <clears throat> so that's what we did here on Saturday. Pretty fun, huh? I wished I could have been live, but like I said, it was so noisy in here, I couldn't do it. It's a crazy day. So I'm picking up her ear, coming up under her ear to take off anything that falls below when it's picked up. Let's do that on the other side. Pick up the ear, see what falls below. See this line you can see? When the head's turned this way, you can see it pop out here. We gotta get rid of that. If I were judging Bichons at a grooming competition, that would be the first thing I did, to pick up the ears on a Bichon. And see how that head looks with the ears up. I see Court Jester's here. Hi, Court Jester. So now I'm gonna pick up the ears from the front, both ears at once. I can see more hair hanging out here, gonna get that. And more hair hanging out here, gonna get that. Right. Comb everything up and back, make sure it's round.
how she's looking. day to play with the puppies. No, we don't. Didn't have all day. Level out her top line a little bit here. Her name is Gabby. I'm letting her run loose. She's got separation anxiety. Stay. to make sure I've got a nice slope on this neck no matter which way she's looking. I like to make sure the ears look pulled together no matter whether they're perked up or put down. I like to have her legs set up under her by making sure I've got a nice little indent. Even though I've got this chest really short, I still want to set her legs up under her. Want to make sure she looks like she's got angulation no matter where you're standing when you look at her. Be right here. So I'm create this nice curve here on the leg. No, no, no. Stay. Hey. Stand. Stay. You're being goofy. It means you are. to be being goofy, girl. All right, guys. I think she's had enough. 
She wants to go home. Right, Razzle? You want to go home? Huh? She says, where's my treats, man? Where's my treats? <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and log off. I will see you next time with another pretty doggy. Say goodbye, Razzle. Tonight, if she shows up, we have Layla, the Havanese, coming in for her fear-free training. So hopefully she will show up and we can see how she's doing this week. Right, baby? All right, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.